Okay, so today's session, what we will do is we'll discuss about an earning. Okay, what is earning? In order to process earning, what details we need, we will discuss. Okay. And of course, payment election rules testing is still pending, and I am into the way another tenant. The data water conflict is not available in the tenant. That's why I'm starting this topic. But on Monday, I will configure all the required data. We will initiate the testing part. Yeah. Okay. When you're creating a payroll learning, a set of questions we have to ask to our customers. Something like, what is the earning name? Example, who is eligible for this name? Who is eligible for this name? What is the frequency? Not mandatory. Okay. And it's uh, not mandatory, you said? Uh, yes, ma'am. Because I will tell why it I'm saying not mandatory. I will explain. Don't worry. It's not mandatory frequency. Sometimes, as I said, earnings are of two types. Through payroll input, when you're processing, you may require to override the frequency. At that time, only will define not mandatory at earning level. And then, do you like to prorate earning amount? If you ask based on calendar days, working days, what are all taxes impacting this earning? In simple, what are all taxes will calculate on this earning? Is there any benefit deductions happen? Any benefit deductions should happen on this earning? Okay, these are common questions that are asked to the customer. Of course, eligibility rule, run category, pay group, additional criteria. Okay, for payroll learning, what is the source? Any guess? Can I create just like that a payroll learning? Basically. Yeah, the source is compensation. Example, I hope she, Logan Mecca has access. Hmm. Okay. I will go to an employee, John. Here, each compensation component, plan, component okay, let's say comp plan or compensation component, each plan, we have to pull the amount into the payroll calculation engine annualized and then deannualized based on the employee pay frequency. What is meant by that? Annualized amount, deannualized based on employee pay frequency. What is deannualized here? Let's see this example now. Same amount, okay? Same amount. I have a monthly frequency. How much the employee will get per month? Take the number 198. 778 divided by 12. How much? 16. 564. 0.83. How I got the value monthly frequency, nothing but total amount divided by 12 months. This is the amount. Same employee, I mean another employee with semi monthly frequency, how much he will get? It's a different amount. Okay, 16,564 divided by two. 
Y is a semi multiple. 8, 2, 8, 2, 1, 4, 1. So, work there has inbuilt calculations. When you select these calculations, it will pull the employee compensation into payroll calculation engine. It will check what is the pay group of this employee. Okay, here it will check the pay group of the employee. He is semi monthly. Semi monthly means every 15 days. So, divide this amount divided by 24. Why 24? Why not 12 here? It's semi monthly. Semi monthly, right? If it is weekly, then 53 weeks. So, automatically the amount should be prorated. Source is here. This is the source. Okay. Now let's see. We will create a simple allowance plan. Simple allowance and plan. And those the source is the source of the comp plans. The source for the compensation plan is compensation team is responsible to create this earnings. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me run one example. We will play a role as a compensation partner. We will play a role as a payroll partner. And we will see, sorry, compensation consultant, payroll consultant, and we'll create and we'll see how the earning works. This session is just to give you an overview and idea how the compensation data will be pulled into the payroll calculation engine. Only one thing, this is share tenant. So we may not have full access, but let me give it a try. So as a compensation team, assume um, we got a, we are all one team, we got a requirement. The requirement is they have uh, they, uh, they have a meal allowance, okay? A new plan called meal allowance. So meal allowance, every semi-monthly, Mr. John Chen, our employees who serve in semi-monthly, eligible for 500 US dollars, okay? Semi-monthly. And let's say $1,000 per month. Per month, $1,000 employee is eligible. Now, I'm going to create an allowance plan, which is meal allowance. This is a compensation team job. It's not our job. I mean, payroll, it's not payroll job. Create allowance plan. It's HR's job? Uh, in HR, again, we have a team called compensation and rewards team. They are responsible. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what is this payroll last run date? Oh, this completely new tenant. Oh my God, no results itself. Let me initiate. Don't worry about this. During payroll process, I will explain. Now I want pay results to process. Hence, I'm initiating this. So just we're refreshing until it should show 100%. 75 employees. The reason why I'm doing is I'm we need some sample employees, hence. Yeah. Now I will select one employee. 
from professional corporate Alison Hunter. Okay, let's we'll go with this worker. Alison Hunter. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna create a new program. Okay, for this employee, we're gonna test. And of course, we have to check the pay results. 1 1 2019. In this date only, I'm, I'm able to test because, as I mentioned, I'm into another tenant. So, on this date only, I can test. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create first role compensation as a compensation consultant. I'm going to create a meal allowance. Meal allowance thousand US dollars employee is eligible per month. Simple requirement. And as a compensation consultant, I'm going to ask create allowance one one two zero nineteen. I'm on based. Okay. Before that, let me check the compensation. Meal allowance is available. No. So let me create this. Maintain compensation elements. Enter meal allowance. Here we are going to map something like this. Once our payroll, once you assign this compensation element or earning, it will map here. Okay. Now let's see. Just a compensation element, it acts as a bridge between compensation and payroll. Now create allowance plan. Allowance plan. Amount based. Okay, oh no, 2019 because the results are available on that date. So now here we want to enter the name AMD. All employees working in US. So element just now we create a right assign it here so i'm saying thousand us dollars per month frequency monthly okay compensation consultant plan is ready okay now compensation consultant is going to assign this plan to an employee Junction. We have spared this. Okay, let's take this guy only. I'm going to assign the compensation plan for Johnson. So the new plan should be available here. Perfect action. Compensation. Request compensation change. Effective date 2019. Okay. Give a reason. One of the any reason can be fine. Scroll down to the allowance section. Add meal allowance. One we created. 
thousand US dollars defaulted. Submit. Perfect. Now at a worker profile, I can see the meal allowance. I can see meal allowance. Okay. Similarly, I will go to the worker pay. Let me show her employee's current pay slip. We are not able to see any meal allowance on the plan. Expectations, once we once we are going up, once we get earning and run, another line should add here, and it should display the meal allowance of thousand US dollars here. Currently, it is not there. Okay, compensation team is done. They created the plan. They assigned to the worker. What next? Now, now the payroll team job will start. Payroll team job will start. Access the task. Create earning. Let this is a very basic, simple earning I'm creating. This is the task, our payroll one. Enter the name, AMD, meal allowance, code, act as a reference ID for this earning. Enter. Default payslip name. If you want to default any uh, payslip name, sorry. Now, if I don't give any value here, this value will be displayed in the payslip, AMD meal allowance. If I give any value here, something like on the middle event, this is going to be present in the pay slip, not this value. I'm repeating again. In the pay slip, in the pay slip, if I give default pay slip name, okay, so this one will be defaulted on the pay slip. If I don't give any value here, this is going to be displayed in the pay slip. Okay, up to customer requirement, however they want. Country, restrict into USA. Effective date, 1-1-2019. One, one, Criteria, run category we created, right? Let's select regular. Okay, pay group. So if here, if, so I have, for example, Semi monthly professional is there, semi monthly, semi monthly professional is there, and then admin is there, and then uh, um, what do you call it? Different pay groups are there. If I select. Okay. Uh, can, yeah. you, mm -hmm. can you explain, I'm sorry, the relationship no. to the run category? So every earning has to be associated with a run category. Uh, okay, good one. So this is the criteria, ma'am. If I'm not giving here, I have run categories different types: regular, off cycle, on demand. So these are my run categories. If I'm not giving any value here, which means this earning is eligible for all the run categories. Oh, okay. If you set regular here, which means this earning is eligible only for regular run category. Why we here we are defining the active employees. You remember? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's gonna check, and this component is going to be calculated. Okay, that's fine. Give regular. If I'm not giving, there's no harm. Bonus run category also it will be processed automatically. Commission also it will be processed automatically. But our requirement is this is only for regular employees and ongoing plan. Similarly, I have different types of pay groups here. If I select any pay group here which means I'm restricting this earning must be eligible only for these people who are part of this pay group. I have admin and professional. Those two pay groups are not eligible. If I unselect it, all the employees in the pay group are eligible. Does it make sense? Yeah, can you scroll up for a minute? I just wanna see what form you're on again. Let me go, can you scroll up? Yeah, so here we have different types of pay groups. Mm -hmm. If I select, if I'm not selecting any pay groups, which means all pay groups are eligible for this earning. Earning in the sense, meal allowance. Everyone is eligible. Okay. If I select any of the pay group, which means 
only the particular pay group employees are eligible. So essentially it sets a restriction. I mean, exactly, right. Okay, this is one, not manually order defined. Then the main important is here. Are further criteria, who is eligible? Here you're defining active as terminated or leave. Here you're defining which pay group is eligible. Here you're defining who is eligible. Okay. Okay, okay. And here, what I'm, what are the data I'm gonna configure? Please, please ignore. Don't worry because you may feel like complex at this moment. I'm gonna start the session called calculation. I will explain in detail. If this session is just a overview for you to understand what is earning. That's all. Okay. So I want to create eligibility rule. What is my eligibility rule? The employee whosoever have the compensation plan called meal allowance, the employee eligible for this earning, eligible for this earning. Okay. So what I'm saying is I have, to, for example, I selected this pay group. Under this pay group, uh, let's say under this pay group, I have 100 employees. Are there in this pay group? 100 employees are there in this pay group. If I'm not giving this eligibility rule, which means all 100 employees are eligible for this earning, it will process for all the 100 employees. Okay. Now, if I gave eligibility, I want to allow, I mean, sorry, I want to process only for the employee out of 100 employees. I want to process only for the employees who is having this compensation plan. Then I need additional criteria here. Let me hold any questions on my statement. So who are you going to, how are you going to select that? I'm going to create that, right. So I'm saying no pay group since the testing tenant, which means all the employees are eligible here, it will check. Additional criteria, what I'm gonna do, select prompt, create. Since I know which calculation is suitable, directly I'm going to that calculation, but I'm gonna walk through all these calculations for you, don't worry. Calculations are never be constant until we'll continuously practice and we continuously understand the logics. It's always mm -hmm. different trial kind. Ma'am, uh, since you're does workday though? Hmm. Does workday come with calcs already created? Of course, that is going to define. Yeah. We are going to define here. We are going to define here. These are the yeah. eligibility rules we have to come. Okay. 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 Yeah. Then instance set comparison calculation. Name it. Relevance plan equal to new relevance. Ma'am, if you're an SAP, this is nothing but schema, sub schema, function, sorry, PCR functions, operations. But compared to that SAP, work the same part. Okay, now I have to write a criteria here. Criteria is source field, employee compensation plan as of period and date, standard fields. Compensation plans as of period and date in the selection list, meal allowance. The employee who is having this meal allowance plan, that employee is eligible. That's what I'm trying to say on to this admin. Then calculation, I'm gonna select a workday delivered calculation. Standard calculation. Compensation element value. Hmm. So this calculation, standard calculation, if you are creating an earning for a compensation plan, then standard by default, so this workday delivered compensation, sorry, workday delivered payroll calculation. I request, can you please read this one? I mean, you can just go through this one.
So you're saying that we would always have to select that. If you're bringing the compensation value and that to amount, not percentage. Percentage, we have different things. This is not suitable for hourly wage. This is not suitable for percentage compensation part, only amount based. So not suitable for salary. Sorry. What did you say? It's not suitable for what? Not suitable for percentage-based compensation plans. Example, housing allowance. Not suitable for hourly uh, compensation plan because we have to process the rate, right? Okay. Okay. Normally, again, this is required some compensation knowledge. Compensation plans are of three types. Amount, a flat amount, let's say a thousand US dollars. Percentage, example, one thousand US dollars, ten percentage. Okay, something like that. Ten percentage you want to calculate. Another one is rate per hour, so hourly wage employee per hour, hundred US dollars. This calculation is suitable here, amount based, not for these two requirements. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Right. So I'm not I'm not going to I'm not explaining in this class since I want to make it very simple because I don't want to confuse you guys. Once we start, we'll create three types of earnings: easy, moderate, complex. Okay. okay let's this is a basic easy one. I'm not giving any further value, scrolling down directly, but I want you guys to explore. Monday will configure one moderate complex. Compensation element. You remember we created a meal allowance. Compensation element, element meal allowance we created and we created the compensation plan with that. Now integrate the compensation plan meal allowance here. You, you got the bridge mem now? This meal allowance is going to fetch the compensation data into payroll calculation engine. Similarly, scroll up. You have two tabs, any earning when you're creating. Effective dated, what are the changes you do here? You must enter the effective date. That's why effective dated. You must enter the effective date, any changes you want to apply. Non-effective dated. Hmm. In, the pay, in the pay accumulation, we have selected one pay component group on gross. Did anyone remember what is the pay yeah. company? Add to gross. Correct. Add to gross. Now, if you would like to add this earning to the gross, you must select this pay component. Then only this particular amount will be displayed under gross section in the pay slip. And what taxes will be calculated on this earning? Federal, state taxable, state, city, local, State unemployment insurance. We will talk during our finance. I mean, what do you call um, finance? Sorry, taxes in class. So, like creating a very basic, simple earning. If you notice everything, I have selected all the fields which are delivered by workday except this eligibility criteria. I created this one just to show how to create eligibility rules. We are going to create more and more in coming sessions. Any questions so you far? You don't put any worker eligibility, then it's just going to pull. Everyone oh. is eligible. Yeah, if I'm not giving this one, everyone is eligible. Everyone is eligible, yeah. Right. So that's essentially, like we said, a restriction. Yes, ma'am. Correct. Yeah. Okay, I'm starting. Okay, we'll do a quick test. So I assigned to Mr. John Chen. Let me go to the worker. Pay 
Okay. Pay results. I'm going to recalculate for this employee since it's a current status in progress, hence I'm able to recalculate. Related action. Pay calculation. Here each pay period, we will get one one row. Okay, for each pay frequency, we'll get one one row. Each row will be added. So I'm going to recalculate to test our earning. It is processing or not. So instead of running the payroll for all the employees, first I want to check for one employee. Related actions, pay result, sorry, pay calculation, recalculate. Now here, if I submit OK, if $1,000 has been added, 14,775, then our testing is passed. If you can still see the same amount, then there is some issue in the configuration. Let's. Okay. Hmm. I can see 14,275, which means amount has been processed. Let's see the pay slip. Has been processed. But question, at employee, I gave 1000 US dollar, but why $500 only has been calculated? It should come $1,000, right? Oh, it's the pay frequency. Yeah, employee pay frequency is? Um, monthly. Right, no, 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 semi month. month. So he'll get in the next paycheck twice a month. Mm, correct, ma'am. He'll get 500, yeah, more. Mm. Right. This the one mm, I would like to give an example. It just a practice. I mean, just to get familiar what is earning, how the data is flowing from compensation, what uh, what is the what is in the compensation element, how it is integrated with our plan and send the data. That's all. Why we are integrating a compensation plan with the payroll? Because uh, directly, uh, if we create the elements in payroll, uh, it will not run in the payroll. No, no, no. That's why it's a compensation element we will call switch. I have my allowance plan here. And I have my compensation element here. This compensation element, we will map to earning. In the SAP terminology, wage type. This is going to act as a bridge between compensation module and payroll module. So, whatever the earnings that we are creating, first we need to create in compensation element. After that, we have to create in elements plan, then it will come to earnings. Right. Now, again, I want to discuss the topic as well. So when I say earning, what is the difference between earning and deduction? And, and, and earning adds to the employee's compensation, right. gross. Right. Deduction mm -hmm. actually takes away. Right. Now let me ask this question. What are the types of earnings we have? Meal elements. We have salary, but yeah. then we have... Um, other types of earnings like a gym membership, allowance plans, housing allowance, a car allowance, yeah. Um, if the company pays part of your premiums for your insurance. Yeah, benefit, benefit. Okay. Benefit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, benefits also we are gonna discuss, that's absolutely, but let's stick to this. Apart from this,
this is also going to be add to the employee gross do you agree if you give salary advance loan amount is going to be add to the employee gross yes correct now ma'am mm -hmm. coming to your question lovely ma'am so you have mentioned all the earnings must be go to the compensation no these are ad hoc correct ad hoc on demand these are not these are not part of employee salary these are like yeah. benefits giving to the benefits giving by the company to an employee so employee can opt take or not take up to employee interest these amounts we no need to assign under compensation these amounts you can process through the payroll input these amounts especially ad hoc payments you can process through the payroll input regular wages must be go through compensation only okay any questions clear or not clear my understanding is like if it is a regular earning then we will include in compensation if it's in in regular like one time payment something like that correct payroll input for the direct payroll directly okay. you can process from payroll correct that's the correct that's what how do you do correct. the payroll yeah. input definitely can i proceed now itself uh shall i okay let's do that it's learning so now let's assume i'm processing loan to this employee okay loan as an employee request a 10000 us dollars loan amount and he agree to repay loan repayment 1000 dollars every month this is earning this is deduction okay this is earning this is deduction now this ad hoc one i can't process through the compensation i in prop payroll itself i have to manage so first i'll create an earning okay let's see so for this guy only we will process create an earning name it md loan payment md loan restricted to country usa scroll down 112019 like regular and category eligibility so since i'm processing through the payroll input ad hoc payment eligible to rule search for payroll input the loan amount the 10000 dollars you are paying is a one time or ongoing it's always one time right once a while you can give loan correct do you agree yes right so i am going to select one of the work delivered calculation payroll input one time exist for pay component this is a work delivered calculation okay what we are trying to say if the employee has one time payment input then the employee is eligible that's what we are saying scroll down in the calculation search for payroll input work the standard calculation and select input amount allowed if you are giving the amount along with the salary ignore this field if you are giving the amount on a weekly basis or in a one a week you need to overwrite the free frequency i will explain this one please ignore i don't want to discuss all the details you will, so you will get confused make it simple okay so i have created earning simple earning loan payment code i gave effective date i have given run category defined eligible to work the standard one calculation also has selected input amount allowed none of the above since i am not bringing from uh, comp sorry no progression because it's loan payment since i'm not bringing from compensation i no need to define any value here make it blank scroll up select okay 
go to the worker, Mr. Johnson. We're testing for this work. Shop. Ah, sorry, pay. Go to more input. Add pay component. Okay, start date 112019. End date. Uh, month zero one thirty one two zero ninety. So one time payment. So there's no problem. Semi monthly view or monthly view. Pay component. We created our pay component loan payment. Select here. Make sure the loan payment should be must be available here. Scroll down. It's a one time payment. Processing defaults. I'm not overriding or adjusting. Process processing through the regular payroll. So also regular run category. Okay. Now here, hold this one. As I said, explain again. Scroll down, scroll to the right side. Type amount, how much loan you want to give? 10,000. And you can give a comment. Manager of two. Process. Just tell us as a loan amount. Okay, select okay. The cost center center, don't worry, I will explain. Make it more simple first. Oh, our input also is not there. How can we test it? Okay, go to the results. I'm going to test it. Related action, pay calculation, recalculate. If you see 10,000 is increased, then it's passed. Okay. Ten thousand has not been increased. Any reason why it is not increased? What went wrong? I, well, I was just going to ask you what you're doing here to quote recalculate. Is yeah. it just a simulation, and then you actually have to go back and? Yes, yes, yes. It's a simulation. We are not giving end result. Okay, just a simulation. right. It's just a simulation to see what it would do to the yeah. pay. Correct. Okay. Um, so why didn't it? Um... We have given a one-time payment as end date uh, for 31st of Jan. Okay. So as it is a semi-monthly calculation, it will take in the next run. Mm, but I gave 1-1-2019, one, one, which means the payroll is happening between these two dates also. Shall I explain? Intentionally, I did one mistake. The reason is, if you do mistakes, you will remember. What I did is, I haven't assigned add to gross. When you don't select this add to gross, this is won't display in the payslip. Make sure this is very important, especially for earnings. Okay. Now let's test again. Same, I'm gonna repeat, red action, pay calc, recalc, if it is increased to 10,000, then it's working. It should work now. Let's see, 24,000, can we see or not? Ah, it's not working. A little afraid to test anything in this uh, shared tenant. Now, let me troubleshoot why it is not processing. I'll go actuals. I will see whether my earning has been processed here or not. Loan amount is not processed. 
Now let's troubleshoot. I'm thinking could be eligibility criteria. I think we have yeah. one-time payment uh, last, but one option is there. Yes, yeah. I will. Can I? I'll just give a try with this because, as I mentioned, hit and try aren't. <laughs> we'll get the result. So. Challenge. Another challenge is when we create the payroll input, it should display for worker here under input. But surprisingly, it's not displaying and not sure if it's a security issue or not. It's okay. I will give it a try. Let's see if $24,000 will process or not. No, it's not processed. Let's see pay component is fetching or not. Mm -hmm. No. One last attempt. If not, I don't want to hold you. Don't worry. We'll just continue. Returning all the One to 15, 15 to 30. Subpeared when we have to select is mid of the month. Hmm, we tried with this. Let me try with this subperiod because mid of the month we are paying to the employee on 15th. Subpeared is nothing but between one date, one to 30. So on channel. Quickly pay tab, pay calc, free calc. Okay. 14 to 24. Ah. Then it's not about calculation, ma'am. The reason is the pay input is not available here. Could be a security issue. So may request, uh, we tried with three calculations. Can I hold and continue the same troubleshoot in our next session? And also we will test out direction as well. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Because I tried with three calculations. Yeah. Not working. I want to check the tenant once. So, but don't worry, I will let yeah. you know the solution. We will troubleshoot. Yeah. Okay. 